Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Champions checking team number 1923, the Midnight Inventors. Talking about an incredible story this year as they go through. Look where they were before to where they are now. But guess what? Still two district wins. Finalists at FMA as well too, at FMA Champs. Congratulations for that. An absolutely gorgeous robot. This is one of the cutest robots I've ever seen, by the way, uh, as we go through. Take a look at what 1923 has to offer. Of course, we're talking about their old arm to where they are now. I love the cube shooter they've been doing. Of course, that arm that's really making it happen during autonomous and in the community area for them. And we'll just talk about the entire flow through and some programming coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Raja, let's start off, we talked about the story of where you were before to where you are now. When Midnight Adventures first started, I remember they had this uh, big arm on it and then your first district came and the arm didn't quite work, but you won the district. So talk to me about where you were and uh, how this was. And then of course, as we start transition to where your robot is now. If you see, there's like a steel ballast on the back. That's where the gearbox used to be to control the, uh, the arm. So if, Surya, if you hold it like this, right? If you hold it like this. So basically um, the gearbox controlled the like rotation, like um, the movement the side to side movement of the proximal arm. and there was a giant belt going down into the gearbox, which allowed the distal move, uh, move um, to go to the store scoring location. And we had many different iterations with the um, uh, end of factor. So we st first started, we started with suction, like with va vacuum and suction. That didn't work out um, because we realized that it wasn't really that consistent. And we then moved on to like a, like a sideways pincher design, like, so it kind of like squished it like a sandwich, like almost, right? And now uh, we moved on to this like vertical pincher, which allowed um, us to like grip the cone better. And these, these actually also spin. So with the weight of the cone, it allowed, it, allowed the cone to be situated. Um, so it would fall like perfectly on the cone node. Yeah. So Ria, let me ask you on, uh, for this, as when your first event got done and the arm, you know, broke and didn't work, how did you get to the spot where you're like, as a team, you're like, okay, this is what we had. It didn't work out for us. We need to do something else. How did you come up with that uh, thought process in order to go to your next district? Uh, so at that point, the arm broke off in our very first match. We didn't even get to score with it. Uh, but almost immediately after, we realized that our intake was all completely capable of shooting cubes um, and that it would most likely excel in that role. Uh, almost immediately after our second match in, we started off a uh, bit of programming, some code changes, and suddenly the intake was off shooting cubes. Um, it was very similar to the one we currently have. Uh, the only main difference was that it was uh, built around the arm, meaning that it could also uh, sort of open itself up so that the handoff process would be easier. However, me switching to shooting cubes meant that we could now forego that process. Uh, and instead simply focus on running the motors and uh, popping the cubes up to where they need to be. Appreciate sure. Let's talk about as we get into the robot for this year here, uh, the intake that you're doing. I'd love to just hear about, uh, you know, how, first off, you know, what do you have? What's it comprised of? But then as you kind of switch to making this your primary for things, let's talk about how that whole process has come together for your team. So back when we had the arm on our robot, we had a different iteration of the intake. It was double jointed as well, so it would move up and down similarly in this position. And we also had a joint to open and close depending on the game pace we wanted back when we scored cones. Now we iterate it to this design where it's single jointed. It goes up and down to pick up the cones. And we have a beater bar here as well, which is pneumatically actuated. So it'll move up and down to, maxim uh, to get rid of um, any problems we have and helps us pick cones much Cube, sorry, much more easily. And here, if we're showing it to you, it gets sucked in very easily, no matter how far it is within the range of the bar. And then we can bring it up and then shoot it with any speed we want. 
By the way, I loved when that came in. It just looked like pretty much any contact point that's just coming right yep. in. That's really cool. That was that. what we wanted with our beta bar, and we were very glad that it worked out. Like our design really pulled through. When you were looking at uh, for wheels, for example, that you're using on here, uh, yep. talk to me about like was this your first iteration of that, or how did you kind of figure out what durometer you wanted to go with to make sure it was going to work out best for your team? So when we um, iterated to wanting to make it a cube only robot. We knew that we wanted cues, but we wanted them fast. So we decided that we'd have our wheels over here, two stacks to make sure they're fully uh, contained within our robot. And then this beta bar here, which like I said, it helps us um, minimize error and it's pneumatically actuated. So we use it when we need it to intake and then it goes down when we need it to shoot so we can get longer range. And lastly, uh, I know we were talking about the stick in a little bit, but for strategy wise on your team, do you find yourself like right up against the grid when you're shooting typically, or do you, do you shoot further back, or does it just kind of matter based on the match strategy or match situation? We usually shoot up against the grid just to get, um, we know that's a safe spot, and sure. we know it's reliable, so we go for that every every cycle. Verdan, talk to me about the uh, the big stick you got here and how that's working out for you. Uh, in the community. I'd also love to hear, it's like, when was this added? Was this an initial thing with your robot, or did it get added a little bit later on during comp season? Um, okay, so what the stick does is, so the rule book states that in order to shoot game pieces in the community, you have to be, or at least some part of your robot has to be inside the vertical plane of the community. So what this stick does is it comes down pneumatically and it is able to cross the plane of the community so we can shoot cubes. Uh, but not only shoot cubes, because I think that it's really just the main essence of it is shooting cubes on the move. So, um, so we can make sure that all those cubes roll in and land to where we want it to be and we can demo that right now. So this was like initially designed for autonomous, but we transferred it to teleop mostly in this competition. So what we've been doing is we've been dropping it, usually our beginning pieces, but in general we've been dropping it and it's like fully programmed to where it'll drop by itself once we press a button and shoot. And, and we like to do it at the beginning so we can sort it out at the end. Um, and where this really came from was, I believe it was after our first competition, we, we wanted to well, this was actually a poll used for our LEDs, right? Um, and we decided that it would be cool if we could shoot on the move from outside the community. And it worked out. It's obviously been working great so far, yeah, right? So it's been really good. Congratulations on everything that's gone into this. Uh, but I think it's a good segue to talk to Alan more about uh, the code and programming and what's gone into that. Uh, I know we just talked about that's been all in one process as it goes through, but anything else that you want to cover in regards to uh, how code has been implemented in the Midnight Adventures robot? Yeah, so to control this intake that you see here, we use trapezoidal motion profiling. And what that allows us to do is give the intake a bunch of different angular set points. So this position that you see the intake in right now, we call that our shoot position, because that's the position we used to shoot in the hybrid nodes, the middle section, and the high section. And when we deploy the intake, it's just a matter of passing another angle. So when it goes down, we can pneumatically actuate the beater bar, as you see right there. And we also keep in track in code what state the intake is currently in so that, you know, in case something goes wrong, we can debug and check our logs and see what's going on. Um, and one critical part actually about our shooting is that um, a lot of the shots for the cubes depend on the cubes inflation. And that's something that we really can't control in a match. And so in order to maximize the accuracy of uh, shooting high or shooting onto the high shelf, uh, we can show that right now. So let me intake real quick. Okay. And then bring the intake up. So what you'll notice is that when I hit the trigger to shoot high, um, you'll actually see the arm move up briefly for a second. You see that right there. And that's to allow more uh, of a vertical path sure. for the intake, for the cube to follow. So that instead of relying on bouncing off of the driver station wall to, to shoot the cube, we can instead just sort of rest it onto that cube show. Yeah, that's interesting too, because it's not, of course, when you're shooting it, but it's also how it reacts and against the, if you do hit the back, right? Because if it's a deflated cube, you're fine, but if it's overinflated, that's just gonna, yeah. it's like a weird carnival game. Exactly, or something yep. like that. yeah. So to avoid, you know, messing with that, it's just easier to give it more vertical room to shoot. Awesome. Well, Midnight Adventures, you have an incredible machine. Congratulations on such a fantastic season. And I love the story of like, you know, you tried something, you went with something else, and you kept iterating to get to the point to have such great success that you had too. So wish you best of luck here at the World Championships, but congratulations on a great season too. Thank you. Thank you.
This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.